recording. I will introduce you, Professor. Tom is here to moderate the chat box. And if you want students to unmute, you can guide them through that. But I will start to let them in. Hello, Makash. How are you? Good. How are you, Ron? Good, good. No one's has a Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us for the Rutgers Business School session led by Professor Mukesh Patel. He's going to talk to us tonight about the leadership and management major, along with innovation and entrepreneurship. So first of all, congratulations, guys, being admitted. We're so excited for you as you impart on your journey. But I'm going to turn this over to the professor. You can put any questions that you have in the chat box. Um, we have our junior, our junior um, academic advisor, Tom Moore, who's going to be moderating the chat box. We also have Professor Ron Richter on with us. So lots of people here to help. So take it away, Professor Patel. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Christine. Thank you, Thomas. Thank you, Ron, our uh, esteemed team at RBS. Um, so it's a walk. Uh, it's really a pleasure and an honor to meet everyone here. To the extent that you feel comfortable and you want to show your video, um, feel free to do that. We love engaging with students and uh, it gives us an opportunity to connect names with faces and also um, from a networking perspective. Uh, if you don't feel comfortable, that's fine, but nothing to worry about. We're um, really one big happy family here and it's Ultimately, it's all about humanity. It's all about people. And so um, I'll give you a little bit of information, but I really want to just hear from you students and or if your parents are next to you uh, or your family, like feel free to bring them right into the screen if you'd like um, or welcome to have them participate. Uh, hi, Ryan, how are you? Rian, Rian, is that how you pronounce your name? Ryan, yeah. Ryan, okay, great, awesome. So feel free to like invite uh, your family or whoever you'd like. Hello, hello. hello. <laughs> Pleasure to meet you. Nice Hi, to meet Emily. you as well. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Emily. Um, so as I see faces pop up, I'll try to recognize you. Uh, so let me tell you a little bit about um, both leadership and management through our department called MGB, Management and Global Business. Uh, and leadership and management are really the core elements of that uh, department. And then I'll tell you a little bit about innovation and entrepreneurship as well, since that's an important component of that department and some of the things that we do. Uh, hi, Shristi. Um, or Shri 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 Shristi. Yes. Okay. Um, and so I'll put a link in the chat box, um, which gives some good information about the, the department, uh, both in terms of leadership and management. Um, and then I'll talk to you briefly about choosing a major minor in general. And so kind of came up with a um, Venn diagram, if you will, of three things to think about as you figure out what's right for you. Um, number one, think about the first lens is talent, skills. Think about what talent characteristics or what skills you would like to develop over time, over your four-year academic experience. Um, and then the second lens is to think about your passions and interest. Like, what would you do if someone said, you don't need to worry about anything and you can do some, you know, one, two, or three things because you're so curious, you're so driven by your passion in that space. And so that's kind of the second lens. And we're going to triangulate and converge all three of these uh, perspectives. And then the third one is opportunity. In other words, what is the market saying about opportunities over the next, not only four years, but the next 10 years, maybe 15, 20 years uh, of your career, post-college. Maybe it goes into grad school, maybe it goes into the work environment, um, maybe it converges both, but really thinking about what is happening in industry. Now, as you might uh, already have experienced, 
um, because of the pandemic, every industry is being impacted in ways that we can, in some ways we can um, predict, but in many ways that we have yet to see what happens 10 years out, right? It's called um, reimagining work. You've got all these innovations and technologies that would have taken 10 plus years to come to the market. And the pandemic basically accelerated and compressed that into one year or three years to see some of the impact. I'm talking about every industry. So if you look at healthcare, you've got digital medicine and, and health tech. If you look at um, supply chain, completely disrupted. If you look at business models, completely disrupted. If you look at uh, consumer products, you've got product tech. If you look at real estate, you've got prop tech or real estate tech. If you look at um, advertising, ad tech. Marketing, martech. Um, so you basically take you know sports, sports tech, fashion, fashion tech, food, food tech. Take any industry essentially and put a lens of tech and innovation behind it. And now you'll see what the future looks like. There are so many influences and forces that are coming into the marketplace. Everything from um, artificial intelligence, machine learning, deep learning, um, to 3D printing, to um, agile methodologies, to uh, data, big data or data science and the whole innovation behind that space, to models like FinTech, which is finance and technology, um, to let's call it innovative business models, um, robotic process automation, RPA, uh, autonomous or automation in general. You look at all of these different models that are coming into the marketplace and now all of a sudden yeah. so many jobs are going to be disrupted. Um, so many jobs will be disrupted. So Showing many career my profile paths. <laughs> oh, I see Sarah in it. I think Caitlin, I think you have uh, your microphone on, but that's okay. I'll invite you to unmute if you have any questions or want to interrupt me, not a problem. Um, this is fairly casual, uh, but you look at these influences and so many jobs that existed 10 years ago are gone today. So many jobs and career paths that exist today will be disrupted 10 years from now, some five years, some three years right? It, almost in any field, whether it's professionals like CPAs, attorneys, account, you know, um, physicians, um, to management consulting, to technology firms, like think about the new titles and roles that have evolved just in the last three to five years. So there's a massive shift happening in work. And now it's like flexible work, remote work, um, all types of things. Companies are moving their headquarters. Companies are downsizing. Other companies are expanding and growing. The whole venture capital and private equity space bringing in multi-billion dollars, trillion dollars into new business models, new products, new services, new technologies. So the world is flat, getting flatter. The world is converging. Um, there's global competition. And so this department takes all of those things and kind of brings it together, this um, leadership and management major. Now, second point I wanna make is, so we looked at that convergence of that Zen, you know, Venn diagram, um, where you'd look at your talents and skills that you wanna develop, you look at your interests and passions, and you look at market. What does the market uh, lead to in terms of opportunity. Um, what are the highest paying career paths? That's not the only thing you should consider. You should think about fulfillment, happiness, purpose, um, your mission in life, your core values in your life. One of the components that you will look at is uh, employability, might be income, might be wealth creation, but it's not the only driver. That's one of the drivers. So. Um, this major, along with several other majors, take a lot of those considerations, right, and help create a ROI, return on your investment for your career, for your college days. 
how do you get the best return and impact on your four-year investment? Um, so that, you know, for some people, it might be three and a half years. If you accelerate, come in with a lot of credits, take a lot more courses, maybe do some summers, et cetera. Some of you might be more than four years, especially if you combine it with maybe some graduate courses or graduate degrees in combination. Um, some of you will probably finish in the more traditional four-year uh, pathway. So something to uh, think about also is how important is your major? So there's two views on this. One is it's important because it allows you to select more courses and your pathway. But the second thing is don't stress over this. Don't like, you know, sweat over this. Why? Because all you have to do is interview 10 or 100 people who've completed college and let's say are one to 30 years out after college. And most people do not do what they studied. In other words, it's a pathway. Um, I studied at Rutgers, I was an undergrad at Rutgers. Uh, I came in as a Henry Rutgers scholar and a merit scholar and a uh, cap and skull and all these fun, great accolades. Um, and I studied econometrics. I kind of created my own major. It was a combination of statistics and economics, two different departments. And econometrics is where it converged. That was my primary study. But then I had two secondaries. So I did one in computer science, kind of like a minor where I took a bunch of courses um, just to understand technology and the impact of technology. And then I did a second, another secondary, totally unrelated, to feed and fuel my creativity. So I did cinematic arts, um, essentially cinematography, filmmaking, and directing and producing feature films. So that included film courses, directing and producing courses, but also music and uh, theater appreciation and like all these amazing courses. For theater appreciation, we got to go to Broadway and watch a whole bunch of Broadway um, uh, productions. And then we would come back and analyze them. And for uh, film, we got to produce and, and direct film and learn about cinematography and editing and storytelling, just really fun, creative stuff. Then I went to grad school to study law and I, focused on corporate and entrepreneurial law. Again, no relation. Um, I became an executive. Uh, I've co-founded a number of companies, 10 companies in total, which over like 30 years, I started my first business when I was in high school. And then the second one in college, third one in grad school, and then it just never stopped. It was like every few years, new company and learn new skills and go on this amazing trajectory. But I also got into investing. And so I co-founded a venture capital private equity fund, ran that, grew that to $100 million of, of assets under management uh, when I was fairly young and learned a lot um, and learned how to invest in people. That was like a whole new lens, a whole new set of skills. Oops, sorry about the sun in the back. Um, and then I also um, started like a uh, startup incubator, accelerator, co-working space where we had a hundred startup companies, came into academia. I get to teach across different schools and departments. So I teach undergrad and at the graduate level at Rutgers, my students come from the business school, computer science and engineering programs, pre-med, pharmacy, um, pre-law students. I also teach at the graduate level, business school, law school, engineering, computer science, and all the STEM schools I have students that are medical doctors. I have PharmDs, pharmacists that are in my class. I love it because I'm not pigeonholed. So I'll give you a concept that you should learn about called expert generalist. It's how you pick, like let's say you're a major or a minor or some concentration combinations, and you start creating a sense of core competencies or quote unquote expertise in that area. And then you become a generalist where you take courses that excite you, courses that the market says, hey, this might be an important course to develop some cool skills in. And you take the depth and the breadth. So this way, you cannot become obsolete when the market or technology or innovation disrupts your career path, um, right? And so you always become 
relevant and valuable to the marketplace. So think about that concept um, and learn as much as you can. Now, here's the other tip I would tell you. Don't think of the university campus or the walls as your four-year educational experience. I encourage you to start meeting and networking with students outside of your major, outside of your school, throughout the entire university. That includes undergrads and grad students. Start developing mentors from the grad students, you know, people who are doing MBAs or masters or other programs or PhDs. Um, network with your faculty inside and outside of class. Join clubs um, where, or professional organizations or um, any kind of organization where you get to practice what you're learning, practice your leadership skills um, and expand your network. Um, number two, get off campus, get out of the building, get off campus, go to New York City, go to Philadelphia, if you can, like figure out ways to do that. I've had students of mine and we figured out strategies of how to raise money. And I've taken students to San Francisco, California to meet with executives at Google and Facebook and, and all these amazing companies. I've taken students to Texas, to Austin and Dallas to compete in case competitions against many other schools across the country. I've taken students to Harvard and MIT and we spend like weekends or a week long attend conferences. Um, so get, get, get out of the building, get out of campus and go network, go attend conferences, go meet with professionals and companies and executives and alumni, go compete in case competitions. My teams at Rutgers, undergrad teams, have placed like in the Holt Prize, which is like the Nobel Prize for undergrad students, um, two of my teams have placed in the top 10 globally out of 80,000 teams worldwide. I've had numerous teams get an opportunity to meet with former President Bill Clinton in the Clinton Global Initiative. One of our teams was even called on stage, one of five teams that President Clinton and Hillary Clinton and Chelsea Clinton actually met and talked to. Um, we, our teams have won more than a million dollars in prizes and, and awards. Um, and so you think of Rutgers as a gateway to do bigger and better things. Don't think of it as just your academic experience starts at Rutgers and ends at Rutgers. You need to expand your horizon and think big and work hard, network really well and push your limits, test your limits. What are you made of? What are you capable of doing? You'll have so much free time compared to high school rigors of like, you know, your schedule being so like set in stone and repetitive every day. Here it's a university calendar system. So you get to you get to network in ways and you get to build your skill sets in ways um, that you don't get to do outside of that environment. Um, what else can I tell you? A couple of more tips. Ah, your, your time cycle is going to completely change when you go to college, right? You become night owls. You start studying at night and you go into the wee bit hours in the morning. It happens. But don't make that your standard practice. Make, don't make that your modus operandi. Why? Because if you can maintain getting up early, not easy, I get it. But if you can do that, you can attack your hardest things early and get them out of the way so that you have some time to socialize in the evening. Um, and so keep that in mind. Number two, prepare before you go to class. If you end up going to class and what you hear from the faculty, that's the first time you're hearing that information, you're already behind the eight ball in some ways. Now don't stress over this, but like build the skills, build good study habits, um, learn time management and productivity because so many students from around the country will tell you that, oh my God, if, you, if they knew going in and, and not experiment with their GPA in the first semester or first year, <laughs> it's called the J curve. The, the, the hard hits you might take on your GPA early 
really make it difficult to catch up and move the needle later. So to be cognizant, be aware, be responsible. One of our core values at RBS is response, you know, um, responsibility. So it's up to you. No one's going to baby you. No one's going to ask you how you're doing. Uh, some people might, I might, if I see you in the, in the hallway or on campus. Um, but like most people, you're doing it for yourself. You're not doing it for your parents. You're not doing it for your professors. You're not doing it for your classmates. You're competing against yourself first and foremost. So continuously raise the bar. Um, and, and, and you're competing at a global level. You know, you might think, oh, my God, I have all these amazing competitors in my classes. That's only a small piece of your competition. You're competing against students from Harvard, from MIT, from Wharton, from Stanford, from Michigan, from UVA, from UT Austin, from UNC Chapel Hill. Um, you know, you're competing nationally and then globally. You're competing against students from um, the BRIC countries, um, from all continents and you're building leadership skills along the way. So I want you to think of things from a global perspective. So with that said, uh, let me talk to you about a few opportunities. I teach a, a course called ICE, Innovation, Creativity and Entrepreneurship. It is a highly um, fast growing, highly coveted sought after course. You cannot take it in your freshman year. I apologize for that. You can only take it from sophomore to senior year. And we have a wait list typically in a couple of hours when the course goes live. And then in the future, we might even have interviews and an application process to get into the course. Um, but it's a course that I highly recommend you take before you graduate. A lot of seniors take it in their last year, but um, I recommend taking it a little early if possible, because if you don't get in, there may not be an opportunity to take it. Um, so, it's a course that really makes you think a higher order of a magnitude, like an executive, like a C-suite executive, um, future leader. It's a course that is unlike any other course you probably will have ever taken in your lifetime uh, because we break all the rules and we push you out of your comfort zone. So it's a um, course where you get to really see what you're made of. Um, and and uh, Another uh, couple of undergrad courses that I occasionally teach, not every semester, one is called strategy or business policy and strategy. That's for seniors only. And a third course occasionally is management, although I'm trying to help develop new courses for Rutgers Business School going into the future, courses that corporations want to see integrated uh, for what they want you to know when you get your jobs, your internships, et cetera. And there's a Road to Success program that we launched two years ago called Road to Silicon Valley program. It's V slash Alley. So it's not only about Silicon Valley, it's Silicon Alley, Silicon Beach, Silicon Mountain. It's all the hubs of innovation, the hubs where like all these amazing companies are located. So think about um, California, of course, San Francisco, Bay Area, maybe Los Angeles, but also think about like Chicago, Ann Arbor, Michigan, um, Atlanta, uh, Boston, New York, Philly, New Jersey, uh, Tampa, Miami, uh, what else? Uh, I think I said Chicago, like all these amazing hubs of amazing companies, the future of, of work. So that program is highly competitive. You can apply as an incoming freshman. Applications will open up in the summer. We will try to notify you. Um, if Ron Richter has your email addresses or Christine, we will send you a link, but you can search Road to Silicon Valley Program, Rutgers Business School, and you'll see a website and we'll put the application on there as well. Um, it is highly competitive. We take students from across the university, so it doesn't matter what school or major you're part of, but if you're interested in innovation, entrepreneurship, or entrepreneurship, which is how do you become a corporate leader with some technical skills and business acumen and critical soft skills, um, that's what we focus on. And once you're in the program, you're in it for life. 
even as an alumni. Um, we will fund student ideas. So we just raised half a million dollars for the program. And we're going to every year give away thousands of dollars to the best student ideas and the best student teams that build companies, that think about how do you build a company. Um, and you get to recruit people. You get to learn how to manage people and lead people as a founder of a company. But we will also teach you about uh, product development, design, product management, um, executive leadership skills. We have a mentorship program that we're launching as part of Road to Silicon Valley program. Oh, thank you for posting that, Christine. I appreciate that. Um, we call it RSVP for short. Now there's other programs. Let me tell you about combining majors and minors. So I like um, the idea of taking like finance and, um, and leadership and management combination. And then maybe there's a minor or concentration in entrepreneurship or something else. Or you can take marketing and leadership and management with maybe a concentration in entrepreneurship. You can take um, supply chain and do the same thing. You can take, right? Like it's a good idea to start combining things because um, that gives you the best leverage, gets, gets you the best breadth and depth balance. Um, you can even possibly combine things with other schools. In fact, I'm working on a stealth initiative. I really can't tell you much about it. Uh, otherwise, we'll have to track you down and, and then, uh, you know, I uh, can't say what will happen, but uh, essentially creating one of the first interdisciplinary minors in the university where RBS is taking a leadership role there. So we're going to talk to other schools and other programs and create an interdisciplinary minor. That might take about 18 months to get it kicked off, but you might be the, one of the first cohorts to be the beneficiary of that uh, during your tenure. So with that, I'm going to stop talking. Um, I will also put my personal website uh, on here. It's profmukeshpatel.com. If you want to learn more about my work, my courses, my programs, you can go on there. If you want to connect on LinkedIn, my LinkedIn connection is on there. It's not optimized for mobile use just yet. So laptop or desktop is the best way to look at it. But in the next couple of weeks, I'll have it optimized for tablet and mobile. Um, also, if you search me on the Rutgers website and the RBS website, you'll see my RBS concentrated work there. Um, now let's open it up. Anyone, uh, you can post your question in the chat box and someone will read them out loud. If you want to talk, which I prefer, I want to hear your voice. I want to see who you are. No question is a bad question. Um, I love students that engage. That's, that's another secret. Engage with the faculty. Don't just sit in class and be a book nerd. Like ask lots of questions, like step out of your comfort zone. Let your voice be heard, lean in, take a seat at the table, uh, especially for all the women who are on this, on this um, uh, screen right now. Let me tell you something, there's amazing opportunities, but you have to reach for them. You've got to step up and make your voice heard. There's something called DEI, diversity, equity, and inclusion. It is so important to hear from the female students. Why? Because we need more women in executive suite positions. We need more women on boards. We need more women co-founders. We need more women investors. And so, um, and leaders and political leaders and business leaders. So like step up, lean in, forget lean in. You heard of Sheryl Sandberg's book, Lean In? Forget that, forget lean in, jump in head first. Um, not just lean in, jump in, own it, take it. Um, so with that said, Q&A time, go for it. Anything goes. Oh, hi, Professor. My name's Colin. Um, I'm from New Jersey. And um, I was just wondering if I could get your opinion or thoughts on... So, um, Colin, is your video on? Are you able to show your video? Yeah, yeah. Can you see my face? I have my video on. I don't know if you can see Oh, me. you do? Okay, hang on. Let me just change my view so I can put speaker and go for it. Talk. Um. So I've, I've talked to a couple of kids uh, from a couple of different business schools around the country and they've all, obviously everybody has a different story and whatnot, but um, I was just wondering if I could get your opinion or thoughts on 
uh, when you think it's the best time to start networking in terms of uh, trying to land yourself an internship, obviously I know that uh, junior year is definitely like the biggest year for internships and stuff, but is there a way that you would recommend in order to, you know, slowly build up your resume freshman year going into sophomore year, sophomore year going into junior Absolutely. Year? So there's two things. We have an amazing career services um, group at RBS and at Rutgers University as well. You, and so they all become resources. They help you with uh, designing your resume, your cover letter, mock interviews. We even have a software technology driven by artificial intelligence and machine learning that will look at your resume and give you advice on how companies use software to filter students out. So it'll do that for you and give you feedback. Uh, then you can connect with alumni and they'll help you do mock interviews. You can like in our Road to Silicon Valley program, we will help with interviews and connections. But we have other programs like Road to Wall Street program. They will also help you. Um, we have a Road to Consulting program. They can help you. When should you start networking? Yesterday. Not only for internships and jobs and career path, but networking is a skill that you never stop. And the earlier you practice and the more effort diligence you put behind it, the better you will become, right? Ultimately, you have to be someone who's likable, someone who's bankable, someone who brings more value to others. The more you give, the more you get. And so networking is not only about taking, it's about giving and then receiving and, and learning how that cycle works. So you should be networking. That's why the first comment I made today is get out of the building, get off campus and start networking. Um, with conferences, with competitions, with opportunities, um, et cetera. So you can, if you play your cards right, you can get an internship, multiple offers for internships every year that you're at the university. And you can get into some of the top companies in the world, but you have to, you have to really strategize and execute well um, and be thoughtful about it and be professional about it. Um, so, and if you don't get an internship early, like let's say right after your freshman semester, there's other things you can do to leapfrog the competition in the following couple of years. Things like research, things like go build a startup company or join a startup company or, or um, go um, take courses, take graduate courses do MOOC courses, massive open online courses, take, you know, who says that you can't take graduate courses while being an undergrad, right? Like to start thinking out of the box, get creative, um, take initiatives, practice your leadership skills, design a product, develop a product, um, pick up new skills that courses, you're not learning in the traditional coursework. Um, so travel, right? Um, like join conferences, pick up various professional skills. So you can do so many other things. Now, there's so many ways to network, to get jobs. Some of the best jobs in the world, the highest paying jobs are never posted. They're jobs that don't even exist. Your job is to convince someone, this is what I can do for you. Can you give me the opportunity? Um, they are some of the best opportunities that come your way as well. So there's different ways to, to strategize and attack that. Uh, initiative. Hope that helped. Thank you so much. Yeah, it did. My pleasure. Hi. 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 Um, this is Ryan Sterling. Hello, Ryan. How Hi. are you doing? And who's that next to you? Oh, that's mom. my mom. Sarita. <laughs> and what's your name? Sarita. Sarita. Nice pleasure to meet you. Awesome. <laughs> Yeah, um, I was admitted to the business school and also the Mason Gross School of Arts, and I have an e equal interest in both marketing and design. So I was just wondering, like, what would you advise to be like my major or minor and which one would be like more marketable as a major? OK, so in terms of marketability, in terms of income and wealth creation or opportunities, um, a combination of those can be very um, beneficial because you can show the the business side of things and the technical skills, but you can also show the, create, the creative power within you, right? And so you can major in, in anything at RBS. It almost doesn't matter. Um, mm -hmm. 
And then you can take courses and see if there's a minor or a concentration or some combination of courses that you can take in Mason Gross School of the Arts as well. Like, like I did, right? Like I took courses yeah. in the business school, in the economics department, in the School of Arts and Science and Statistics department, in the math department, in the computer science department, and Mason Gross. I was like, I'm like, no walls are going to step in, stand in my way of learning. I'm going to knock down, down those walls, go around them, go over them, go right through them. Doesn't matter what it takes. And so um, there's no right or wrong, but don't think that there's either or. You can do it all. You can figure out a good combination, experiment, talk to other students, talk to alumni, talk to professors, and then figure out that pathway. But I would say marketability wise, study maybe something like um, business analytics and information technology, if that's something you're interested in, because that gives you the quant uh, skills, just like finance gives you the quant skills. Um, you can match some of those with even marketing. Um, we have a very strong marketing group at RBS or even management and leadership, like any of those combinations of things. And you know what, at the end of the day, if you wanted to take some courses and you say, oh, like didn't get a chance to minor in this, major in it, doesn't matter. Like once you graduate college, no one's going to care what major or minor you did. It becomes less and less relevant the more experience you get. Experience takes over. No one's going to know. Even your GPA, it's important initially, but work hard. Take rigorous courses. Build that strength. Five years out, you won't even remember what your GPA was and no <laughs> one's going to care. Right. So, so just like, it's like, but be the best version of yourself, like accelerate that learning curve and, and put out some good impact in the world. That is what's going to be the qualities that everyone's going to look for. Yes. Initially GPA is important for the first foot in the door for many companies, not all companies. Um, many companies are now, delisting your GPA and your major and minor as the top criteria. They wanna know, are you an innovative leader? Are you a creative thinker? Are you a human being that people want to work for you and with you, right? Or are you quote unquote, a jerk um, where nobody <laughs> wants to work with you and for you? Doesn't matter how smart you are, right? Um, there's a study that shows that your IQ represents less than 25% of your success in life, right? So put that in perspective. There's a lot of other things like emotional quotient, adaptability, um, all these things. Um, so in terms of her accepting, um, cause I know that she has to choose a school when it, accepting. Um, so that's, I think that's pretty much where she's torn. Like, does she accept, does she go into the Mason Grills? Does she accept business? Okay, if marketability and access points to a variety of career paths that are financially rewarding, then I would say RBS okay. as the primary school, right? And that doesn't mean yeah. you exclude the other school. It just means you're a primary school. Right. Okay. Yeah. If I yeah, think in too here, Ryan. Um, yeah. If you want to take any of the majors at RBS, we need to be your primary school. So yeah. just um, on that perspective, if you start in Mason Gross, you will not be able to major in anything with RBS unless we are your primary school. Right. You can only, I think, minor at RBS. Correct. Yeah. And that's a yes. business administration minor. Right. Okay. So it, it's very limited. So you won't have to declare your major in your first year. Everyone comes in as a pre-business major and the way the curriculum is set up is block step. So everyone starts with the same six pre-business and then you take these intro business core requirements. So you're going to get intro to marketing, intro to management, intro um, to supply chain so that you can see what do I like, but more importantly, what don't I like? So if Correct. you want to change your major, you can do that here without losing any time, money, or credit. So Correct. the rule of thumb is usually to 
commit to the more competitive of the two schools. Now we're we're a different type of competitive school versus Mason Gross because that's more artistic. Yeah. Um, but as the professor is saying, I guess you kind of want to think about not where you're going to be next year, but where are you going to be in five years? Right. And what's the right. school that's going to be able to get you there? Right. Okay. Right. Like, think Thank about, you. like even in, in creative and visual arts or Mason Gross, like, um, so what were you thinking? What are your passions within the creative side? Like I really like design, basically just graphic design, mainly making like brochures or advertisements and things like that. Okay. So a lot of those skills, you can become so proficient just through like online training and like yeah. experiential learning. So you, you don't necessarily have to major in that. You can pick up those skills along the way, right? Yeah. Because a lot of that may get automated right uh graphic design I mean, there's already startup companies that are automating design and so it's called low code no code design uh temp, you know all that kind of stuff so you have to think about 10 years out not yeah. just in the moment yeah. and, and nothing, nobody says that you can't get a business degree and then go run a company that does design become a design yeah. expert right but now you have the acumen to lead in that space when you guys have told her exactly what she wanted to hear, because that's what she wanted, that's what she was leaning towards. I told her, give both a chance and see what, you know, yeah. she's yeah. very talented. Um, yeah. And she was also <laughs> offered a scholarship because mom, you know, thinking of the money, she was also <laughs> um, offered a partial scholarship from Mason Gross, but she wants, she okay. wants to decline yeah. the scholarship and I always say business. long-term thinking is a good skill to develop, right? Because you want to maximize long-term opportunities, not just short-term. Okay. And Ryan, and thank you. you have scholarships at the business school. So after your very first year, um, you can apply for scholarships based on how well you're doing and how involved you are. So- And let me tell you competitions, really also okay. case competitions. I have students that have won like 50 to $100,000 okay. in the four years through case competitions. So it's not only scholarships, you can win money by competing against other students in schools. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. okay, who's next? Let's go rapid fire. I have another question if you don't mind. Um, can I just see if other students have any questions? Then I'm happy to come back. Oh, yeah, of course. Oh, wait, wait. Sorry. Is that a new student? Like, in other words, someone who hasn't asked Elaine, was that you speaking? Yes, that was me. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, absolutely. I thought it was somebody who has already asked a question. Go for it. No. Okay. Well, hi. My name's Elaine. I'm an accepted student to the business school from New Jersey. Congratulations. And I had a question. <laughs> I had a quick question because my goal um, is to kind of hopefully end up in the government somehow because I'm more into like the politics side of things. So I was curious if I did go to Rutgers. Um, I know you were saying to the last question, like, you know, accept the business school because it is that more competitive atmosphere. But would you, um, what would you um, suggest in terms of another major or minor like political science through uh, schools of arts and sciences or like what other, um, Majors are my yeah, question. if you're interested in government, I would say maybe a minor in political science could be a good opportunity, um, but it almost doesn't matter. If you develop good, strong leadership and technical and business acumen, and you start networking with people in government, you know, mayors, um, senators, congresspeople, um, political leaders, um, uh, people who do research in government, uh, academics in political science, uh, attorneys, uh, you know, law students or governors or even like UN related things or um, state or federal or local government related um, experts. You start developing that network, you will crush it. You will crush it. And so the key is to, to leverage all the assets and tools and opportunities that you can avail yourself to. Thank you so much. My pleasure. And networking is a key. Oh, 
Um, could, could you like elaborate on research? Can you say your name, please? Uh, my name is Srishti and I got admitted into the Rutgers Business School. I'm from New Jersey. Okay. Uh, so I, the research opportunities, I thought it was like mainly for STEM subjects. Well, what exactly do you do as like a business student? For research, in terms of research related? So there's lots of faculty that um, are, are into research. Not every faculty, but many are, especially tenured faculty and research faculty, the ones with PhDs, doctorate degrees. And those faculty do research all the time. They publish articles. They give keynotes at major institutions and organizations, and they help the corporate sector or the government sector or the uh, nonprofit sector or the private sector with advancing things through research. So there's lots of research opportunities at Rutgers University. Here's a fun fact. In New Jersey, there's at least 20 um, recognized accredited universities, if not more, right? Let's say 30 plus. Um, would you believe that Rutgers University has a bigger research budget per annum than all the other universities combined, including Princeton. How's that for a statistic? So there's lots of opportunities for research. So uh, that, that was very helpful. So if I was to like, like if I wanted to do it, do I just have to like ask, do I have to fill out any- You, 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 you talk to your academic advisor and you talk to, students who've already gone through the you know upper class students you talk to faculty there is a program at Rutgers called Arresti uh, which you can uh, look at and that's a research organization um, there's also individual faculty just find what some faculty is researching look look up their uh, profiles on the RBS website and once you see someone who's doing interesting research reach out to them and say can I help you with your research Thank you. Pleasure. Anything else? How are we doing on time? Good, we got about, I think, five to 10 minutes. Yep. Um, I have other, yes, yes, go for it. I'm so sorry. Um, Always introduce yourself with your name. Yeah, you, of course. Listen, listen, and here's why. Here's why. People may or may not remember what you know. People may or may not remember what you do. But people will never forget how you make them feel. And part of that storytelling of the emotional connection is your name, is your identity. So you want people to remember your name, including professors. So always start with, hi, I am. Even if you have to say it a few times, I have 700 students a year that I engage with in class, outside of class. Um, it's impossible to know everyone's name. But if you say it enough times, it, you increase the probability of the connection of face and name. So, so go for it. Yes. Um, my name is Arielle Schlein. Um, I'm from New York. And um, the question I had, um, it was partially answered um, from the other participants that you really, really helped me out. Thank you. But I just want to know how to, because I'm in School of Arts and Sciences for Political Science, I got in there and also was admitted for business school. But my true passion is music. So how would I be able to um, merge um, business major and music? Okay. So more than political science, business has a better interaction with the creative arts. So think about creative arts as a trillion dollar industry. Name any major organization in music. Let's say um, the uh, MTV Music Awards, the Grammys, the um, um, you know, um, musical record labels, um, the, the uh, 
the Choice Awards, the Music Choice Awards, Country Music, CMA, Country Music, you, you name any musical organization, guess who's running it? People with strong business and leadership skills, right? And so you can absolutely, in fact, think about musical artists, singer songwriters who made it big, Ariana Grande, um, Taylor Swift, um, Justin Bieber, um, Rihanna, right? Like J Lo. You you name any of these artists. Do you know what their number one skill set is? Apart from being a musical extraordinaire, is business executive skills because they run their brand. So they under they need to understand finance. They need to understand strategy. They need to understand marketing and branding. They need to understand leadership and management. They need to understand a lot of those things. And they're really good business people. That's how they create their brand and monetize their brand. Even if music is the vehicle through which they do it. Thank you so much. Pleasure. Let's go, a few more, let's get them in really fast. Otherwise you will miss out, you'll be a bystander, you'll be someone who um, stands on the off fields rather than playing in the game. Hi, I'm Sarah, I'm from New Jersey and I've also been admitted into the Rutgers Business School. Congrats. Um, <laughs> thank you. So I have a general question about, this is going past just the undergrad studies, so like masters in business, right? So what is something like, uh, getting your master's going to do like to give you any like opportunities compared to just undergrad and getting okay. your master's. So you should do some research on um, the value of a master's or an MBA degree or a master's degree and kind of um, impact of a master's degree on income levels or roles or titles or opportunities. And that'll give you a lot of information. Here's what I recommend undergrad students. If you're interested in doing a graduate degree, I typically recommend after your undergrad degree, work for three to seven years, plus or minus. Get some experience and, and get out of the mindset of just being an academic student. Get some real world experience and then apply to grad school because you, then you have more to contribute and more to learn in grad school rather than going straight through. When I was an undergrad at Rutgers, I went straight through and got my doctorate in law straight out. If I were to do it again, I would work for several years before going to grad school. Number two, you don't have to pick only one grad degree. You can now combine grad degrees. Like you can do an JD MBA, law school and business school combined. You can do MBA master's combination. You can even do DBA, doctor of business administration. There's a lot of opportunities and options. You can do like advanced degrees, like in a CPA degree um, or get professional certifications. Um, so that's what I recommend. Thank you. Pleasure. Hi, my name is Dimitri. I'm from New Jersey and I was also admitted to the Rutgers Business School. Hey Dimitri, love the fact that you got a little uh, Paper whiteboard in the back. Awesome. Yeah. Visual um, thinker. Yeah. <laughs> uh, my question had to do with the uh, the Silicon Valley program. So yeah. I'm also interested in computer science. So I was trying to like debate between computer science and um, a business field like the business school to go into. I'm leaning towards going into the business school and then minoring in computer science. That's a very powerful combination because you have both the technical quantitative skills um, rigorous program, and you've got the business acumen combined. I think it's it's like a very powerful combination. And Road to Silicon Valley program, RSVP, is a great program for students doing that interdisciplinary approach. Okay, perfect. Yeah, that was my exact question. Is like Silicon Valley does that incorporate computer science? Oh, it incorporates everything about innovation, entrepreneurship, technology, design product, um, scale, all of those things. Awesome, thank you so much. My pleasure.
Probably have time for about one or two more questions, guys. All right, last two. Hey, Professor, gonna, I'm sorry. Drop the ticket. Uh, can you hear me, Professor? Yes. yes. Hi. I'm uh, Sartak. I'm from New Jersey, and I got into RBS as well. Hey, and Sartak, I was wondering, uh, thank you. Uh, a couple questions ago, a girl asked about uh, master's degrees. And I was wondering, with this uh, recent uh, push over the last few years of questioning whether MBA degrees are worth it, uh, what, what are your thoughts on that? So I think it's, um, if you're going into a more traditional corporate ladder path, then the best way to figure that out is to ask people you would be working for one, two, three levels above and say, do you, what premium do you put on someone who has an MBA or a master's? And that will guide you into that decision-making. If you're going into, I wanna build my own company, then yes, a master's degree can, won't hurt, but it's not, nece it's not necessary per se your execution skills are gonna be more valuable, right? So it depends on what you wanna get out. The other thing is you don't have to make a decision right away. Work for a few years, see what's happening in the marketplace and look at the return on investment of the master's or an MBA. I can tell you this, that all the top MBA programs, a master's program, Rutgers included and Ivy Leagues and public and private universities, they're shifting the model. They're becoming more flexible. They're becoming more innovative. They're doing hybrid programs with online and on-campus learning. Um, all these models are changing. There's traditional MBA. There's part-time MBA, full-time MBA, executive MBA, master's in business, specializing in all these different things. So don't you don't need to worry about it now. You have four years to start thinking about it, and then you've got a few years of work experience to get before you can you should make that decision. And look, while you're an undergrad, maybe you'll take some master's level courses by the time you graduate undergrad. So then you might have even a better sense of how to do that. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, so that is time guys. I just wanna thank Professor Makesh Patel again for giving us this time, his insight. Congratulations to all of you guys who have been admitted. Good Ooh. luck with your decisions. May 1st is National Decision Day. I'm not supposed to say hit the button, but I'm going to tell you to hit the button anyway. <laughs> I hope you join us over this week and next week as we go through different sessions to really explore the different programs that the business school has to offer. There's a lot of content that we want to deliver to you guys. Um, we wish we could do it in person, but we are making the best of um, our virtual sessions. So this session was recorded. We will have it up on our website. So if you want to go back just to listen to anything, um, again, I put some things in the chat box as far as our um, session for the Office of Career Management, because I know we had a lot of questions regarding when to start networking, resumes, critiquing, internships. So we have that session coming up later this week, but really best of luck with your decision, guys. Whatever you choose, I hope that you love the schools that you pick from the moment you step foot on campus and learn to love it every day that you get there. That's and work, and work hard, about. work hard. Also think about professional um, organizations like, uh, um, like professional fraternities and sororities. RBS has several amazing ones, uh, including DSP, Delta Sigma Pi, and there's a couple of other ones, including an honors fraternity. I'm talking about the professional ones, which I uh, recommend. Yeah, so great. So hopefully we will see you on Saturday. That's the big shebang this Saturday, April 10th. Dean Markowitz kicks it off at nine, Dean Schnatter at 10. So lots of content. So I look forward to seeing you guys in many, many sessions. Turn those cameras on so that we can see your face and remember you because we will be back in fall. So we will see you all on campus. I look forward to it, guys. Thank you for <laughs> right. attending. And if you see me on campus, just stop me and say hello and remind me where we first met. Take care, everyone. <laughs> Good, Good night, luck. everybody. Good night. Good night. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so much. This was so helpful. My nice. pleasure. Professor. Yes. Um, right before you guys.